Welcome to a personal interview with Joan Rausch, conducted on April 28th by Lindsay, part one. To be a historic consultant, one through 67. How do you do your job? How do I do my job? Well, <laughs> uh, my job, you want to know what my job is? Yeah. <clears throat> I work in historic preservation, <clears throat> and my job is to uh, identify houses and buildings and sites that are eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. Do you know what the National Register of Historic Places is? No. It's a, a national list of important uh, historic buildings. And, and to get on that list, there are certain criteria that you have to, have to meet. And so I determine whether the property that I look at meets those criteria. And then along with that, um, in order to show that these buildings meet the criteria, I have to know the history of the building. I have to find out the history, which means a lot of research in the library and newspapers and talking to people to put a history of the community together so you know where this building works and fits and know who built the building and who decorated the building and who was the architect and, and know about the person who lived there, all of that kind of thing. And so I do that, and then uh, I usually do it for <clears throat> a government, governmental agency, like uh, the City of La Crosse. So when you get done, you take all the information and you write it all up like this. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa is right. And other things that I write are like, these are National Register nominations, and there, it's a document that tells you about the history of the building and um, the people and why you think it's important. So those are, it's a lot of writing, mm -hmm. a lot of reading, a lot of researching, a lot of talking to people. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Okay. Who encouraged you to, do, you to take this path? Who encouraged me to take this path? It was a very long path, <laughs> <laughs> a very long path. I started out as a nurse when I first got out of uh, school. My first entry into college was nursing. And I was a nurse for 15 years, <laughs> and, but I was always interested in art. And so I started taking art courses uh, because I wasn't getting what I really wanted out of nursing. So uh, then I discovered art history, and I found out that my real ability lied in research, because I could put the facts and things together to make a story, <clears throat> which was, um, I found out not everybody can do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was my, one of my, uh, my talents, and so I was able to take that talent at that point, and I was already 40 years old when I did that, into a new career, and I went back to school and got a master's degree in art history. And my professor was in historic preservation, and so that's how I got there, but my professor here, his name was Les Crocker when I went to school here at the university <coughs> getting the art courses was also an art historian and he was very influential in, uh, in encouraging me to use this talent so that's how I got there. When do you usually work? Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> this answer you're not going to like because mm -hmm. it means uh, this is a lifestyle it's not you don't have a nine to five job <clears throat> because um, when you're in business you, um, you have to see people a lot during the day but sometime you've got to do this writing <laughs> you've got to do this researching so you end up working many many hours and it's not you know it all depends on what's happening in the day whether you get that amount of work done if you don't get it done that means then you got to work that night mm -hmm. to get it done okay do you have a certain title that you're called? I'm called a historic consultant. And uh, I like the term architectural historian because that's what I'm really interested in is the architecture. But um, it doesn't cover everything. So I usually use the term historic consultant because that is more meaningful to people that I work for. Where do you work? Where do I work? I had my own consulting business. So I had my office in my house, uh, which uh, I have a computer and copier and all that sort of thing in my house. 
and that's where I do my actual writing. But my work is also, I have to go out in the community and interview people. I have to go see the building. Mm -hmm. I have to go photograph the building. I have to go to the State Historical Society in Madison to uh, confer with the people there who run that program. So I work mm -hmm. lots of places. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do you choose to do this? Why? Because every, every, whenever you work, you have to have some sort of reward. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not fun, other than money. <laughs> <laughs> and I love putting the puzzle together, finding all the pieces that tell you about the story. And that is, it's it's a, a, a great deal of satisfaction in finding those pieces because that's your talent. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people give up before you find the pieces. They don't want to do that research in the newspaper, which is very tedious. They, don't, they can't find the pieces because they haven't got the patience to do it. And so um, it is a talent. And you enjoy using something that you're really good at. And it's, it's very satisfying to get the pieces together. OK, um, how long have you been doing this? I started uh, in 1982. And I, uh, I sort of uh, stopped being fully uh, work, you know, working all day long, et cetera, mm. about 2002. And so now I just do it um, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of semi-retired. Have you always wanted to do this? I didn't know what I wanted to do when I got out of high school <laughs> because I come from a very different time. Uh, women, I grew up in a very, um, I grew up on a farm, and women were not encouraged to do anything other than live on the farm and have children and cook. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very difficult breaking out of that system. And so, and, but you could be a nurse or a teacher, see that was very acceptable. So that's what you were, even though you, your heart was somewhere else, <laughs> that's what you did. But I always was interested in art, and I was always interested in nice houses and, and beautiful architecture. So um, it was always laying back there in my mind. So when I got the opportunity, I knew, I knew that's what I wanted. What's the most important part of doing your job? What's the most important part? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a big question. The most important part. You mean in, in what in the actual work I do, or in the actual how I approach it or feel about it? Your work. Actual work. The most important part is, I suppose, the most the, the largest goal, the the very uh, most important goal is to identify those properties that are eligible for the National Register. That's probably the biggest thing, and all the other things go along with it to support that. Goal. What is the hardest part? The hardest part uh, is the writing. The writing? <laughs> the writing. It's, oh, man. Doesn't it get boring sometimes writing all the time? Well, it doesn't get boring writing because every, every house is so different. Mm -hmm. And every community that I work for is different. So you never do, it's not like repeating okay. anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's new and different each time. Do you do this alone? If not, who with? I, um, if the project is small enough, I do the whole thing. But if it's a very large project, like I did this uh, survey of, um, of La Crosse here, this is a very large project. <laughs> and we identified thousands, of, uh, we looked at thousands of different buildings. And so then I, I would uh, ask one of my colleagues to help me. And that's what I did. Here, I asked one of my friends, who's a who's an American historian, to do this with me, and so she did. And then I also had someone else who who knows a lot about the lacrosse history to help me, a local person who knew a lot about the newspaper research, and he helped. So it just depends on how big the project is. Mm -hmm. And now with the age of computers, because we used to have a secretary, <laughs> but we don't have secretaries anymore because we have the um, computer. <laughs> lucky <Computer>. us. <laughs> oh, lucky us, right. <laughs> what is your favorite part about it? 
What's the very favorite part? Mm. Mm. <laughs> ah, my favorite part. I guess my favorite part was at the end of the project when I could do these little booklets like this. <laughs> when you, you knew all about the, the city's history and you could um, then make these wonderful little booklets for the community, and which costs, we don't get to do it very often because it's, it's kind of costly. You get to make these booklets about their history. You get to put in your photographs. is isn't like a mini little, little small book. And it was lots of fun because you really knew what was there and you could use what you'd done and make it look really nice. That was my favorite part. When you said, like, if it's a small project, you do it yourself, like, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means that I go out and uh, usually the project involves looking at the building, surveying the building, and doing the research and doing the writing and all of that. And... Um, that means that I would do the whole project. In this project, this big, bigger project, I was able to break off the um, history part, the, the general history part, and then I could just concentrate on the architecture, which is what I like. So I had a, this friend, my colleague, did the like the history of the commerce, history of uh, s the social aspects, uh, what other histories there's. Um, Religious, she did the religious history, that sort of kind of general history stuff. And then I would just concentrate on identifying the buildings and describing the buildings and talking about the architecture. What's the biggest project? So when I do it all myself, then I do all of it. I do all that general history plus the architecture and the photographing and all of that. What's the biggest project you've done so far? This one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. This one. This involved thousands of buildings. Whoa. So, um, yeah, that was probably the biggest. How old were you when you started? When I started this career? <laughs> I was, um, I think I went to graduate school when I was 39. 39. And I graduated uh, with a master's when I was 41. But I also had a you know, nursing career before that. So then, you know, that was from college on. If you couldn't do this job, was, is there any other job that you would like I to do? do? I like to be an architect <laughs> or an artist, <laughs> an artist, an architect. So you like art? Yep. Okay. I like the art better than the history part. Put it that way. <laughs> uh, yes. But you do the history because that's essential to what you're doing. Do you do your job out of lacrosse? Yes. Where do you do it? I do it out of my house. <laughs> I have my office in my house. But uh, when I used to do these kinds of surveys, these, one, these surveys, then I would go live in that community for a couple months to, to be able to gather the information and do the photographing and all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah. Whatever, whatever it takes mm -hmm. is what you do. The terms, the roads you traveled, what does that mean to you? The roads I traveled? What does that mean to me? <laughs> oh, the roads I've traveled. <laughs> oh, that could mean the roads I traveled from the time I was growing up. Well, just the term, because... Or the t uh, terms I traveled while I was doing my job. Anything. Anything? Yeah. Well, the roads I traveled to get to where I am now, is that what you mean? Well, that's very complex, because I, it wasn't a very straight line. <laughs> it was very crooked. Um, and, you know, it's just sort of um, because I came from such a different time from growing up than you, you are growing up in, so that I wasn't, um, I wasn't able to go directly to what I wanted. So you had to, you had to uh, do that sort of thing until you could get to the point where you could do what you wanted. And I already had two children I had to take care of. 
and um, that, of course, slowed me down in my path. <laughs> but my daughter here was my inspiration uh, a lot of the time because she's very bright, and I felt that if I couldn't do it, how could I expect her to do it? And that's pretty much the way it worked out. She uh, was named Outstanding Young Woman uh, from uh, by the uh, local YWCA back in 1986. And she has since graduated with a PhD in engineering from mm -hmm. Berkeley. So, um, Berkeley in California. So, I feel that uh, what I had to do to do what I did was very important because of her. Do you have any time for your family when you're working? When I'm working. Well, that's kind of the good thing about the way I work because when I, I work by contract, that is, I sign a contract to do a project, and I'm able to arrange those contracts so that when there are special family events, I can just go. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about a boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> you come and see me. Uh, and so that's been a good thing. And so I, you know, I have two, three, three grandsons now, and, I, and I'm able to, to uh, take off and, and go see them when I do. But if they were here, that would be a problem because yeah. then I wouldn't be able to manage the time quite so easily because if your grandchildren are in town, mm -hmm. then, but they live far away, so I have to just work out blocks of time to go see them or when they're here. What's the difference between an architect and um, a historian? Architectural historian? Yeah. An architect designs the buildings. He works with the design uh, and the structure of a building. And he's not necessarily concerned with the history of the building. An architectural historian studies history of architecture from the be beginning of time uh, when they had, you know, with the Greek temples and the Roman ruins and all of that sort of thing, all the way through time, the different styles and what's happening with the styles and why they happened. Whereas an architect is more concerned with the present. They're they're only concerned with the, although they have an interest in what happened before, they're only concerned with what they're building at the at that particular moment. Okay, well, that's all I have. Do you have anything about it? Um, like when you start a new project, does the time, like, is there an average time or does the time always differ? It differs. But you <laughs> learn from experience that doing this kind of a survey ta will probably take so, ma you know, so many months or so many weeks mm -hmm. or so many hours. And so then you, ca you gauge your cost based on how much time you think it's going to take. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you run into problems and you're under contract, well, too bad. <laughs> 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 you you know you, you don't uh, generally get more money. You just have to do it. Particularly if you work for cities who get money through their city council, and they uh, budget a certain amount. Well, there isn't any other money to cover any <laughs> extras, so you have to make it work within that period and for that amount of money. Like when you said when you were the boss, do you have anybody working for you, or you just work by yourself unless you need somebody? I work by myself unless I need somebody. Right. That must be pretty nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's nice. It is very nice because the one thing that you have to understand, even though you're you're in a new time, you know, you're growing up in a different time now, it still is a problem for women. And um, and if you have run your own company. You see, there's no other, there's no man they can go to, they can ask questions of or whatever. They have to deal with you. They have to deal with the woman. <laughs> and so you don't have so many problems that way. As if you were in an office and there were men around, they would always ask the man. Or, you know, if you run to, there are still some customers who prefer to deal with men, but if you're, the, you're there, they have to deal with you because you're the, the owner, the, the, person who can make things go and get things get things done, so they have no choice. So that's been good. When you need somebody, do you prefer a certain person or do you just different pick different people every time? When they, when they work for me? Mm -hmm. I, it depends on what, what I need, you know, because I like to do the architecture part of it, mm -hmm. 
and so I always have someone else do the history, the general history part. So because I like the architecture. What's your favorite project that you've done so far? My favorite? Oh. <laughs> My favorite. Oh, that's pretty hard. You don't have a favorite? <laughs> right, because they're all so different. They're, you know, every project I do is so completely different from the other that it's really hard. So this one was the hardest? That was probably the hardest. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it took the longest? Took the longest. <laughs> yes, the City of La Crosse was the hardest and took the longest. And it's not, it's not easy working in your hometown. It's easier to go to another town uh, and work. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's true. Why is that, though? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Well, I don't know why that is. It's too. It's unfortunate that that's true, but that is true. It's different. <laughs> well, you know where the resources are, so that part is easier. But I guess it's dealing with the people that's harder, because they they know you from a different situation, and all of that. And when you go to an, a strange town, you're there only as a, as a uh, so-called expert, mm -hmm. and so. They don't give you a lot of arguments. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just easier. And, then you, and also, you don't have a big investment in that town. So you go in, you do your, your job, and you leave. Mm -hmm. And so they look at your report and decide what they want to do with it. And, but you're not there, so you don't, you don't have that great emotional hang-up. Where's the farthest place you went? Farthest place I went? Probably... Probably up north to an area around uh, north of Wausau, <laughs> way up to the northern Canadian border. There. You get to pick all your projects that you get to do? Mm -hmm. I can say whether I want to do them or not. Right. I don't pick them, but I, I say do you I want. have choices? I have choice. A choice whether I want to do it or not. Has there ever been like a time when you wanted a project but you haven't gotten it? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's part of the game because you have to you have to supply a uh, what we call a bid mm -hmm. when you're working by contract, and they usually get cities usually get the people I work for usually get a couple of bids, and so they generally take the lowest bid, no matter and uh, it does they don't always know <coughs> what they're getting for it because they don't they just take the lowest bid they don't necessarily look at the quality or whatever. So that's kind of hard because if you really try to do a good job, you would think that you'd be able to get jobs based on the fact that you do a good job, but it doesn't always work out that way. Does your kids like your job? Do my kids like my job? Well, you know, my kids were pretty well grown by the time I started doing this. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they have a big feeling one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're I think they respect me for doing what I do because <clears throat> they know they've been out in the world long enough to know that how hard the world can be. <clears throat> so, um, but that's, but growing up they weren't, except for my daughter. My daughter was only 12 when I went off to graduate school. So that was hard for her. But then I came back. So I was, I was here. I was gone for two years to graduate school. So I came back when she was 14. <laughs> Has anybody in your family done this job before no. you? No. <laughs> do you think anybody will? Well, anybody do. <laughs> in your family? Nobody in my family had ever gone to college before I did what I did. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I have a niece who is work, who is getting uh, a degree in uh, music, museum work, <clears throat> which is kind of related, but but not, not exactly. They don't have the interest in architecture that I do. Oh, yes. well, that's all I have. <laughs> Is there anything? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> do you have anything to show us? Well, I think, th I think it went that way. <laughs> okay. I think it went that way. Okay, so. So I just have this, if you want to look at the City of La Crosse yeah, okay. thing. And I have my daughter here. I have another picture of my daughter. She graduated from Central. Central. She was Central. She was salutatorian of her class, and she's 
gone on to bigger and better things. And I'm very proud of her. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't know that she would have done that all if I hadn't done what I did. So. So you guys both inspired each other? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> very definitely. Yes, I, I'm, she's much brighter than I am. <laughs> she works with mathematical formulas, and I go, hmm, that's nice. <laughs> and um, these are some communities I did outside of La Crosse, Watertown and Chippewa Falls and <coughs> Menominee Falls and Mineral Point. <laughs> I'm not. But um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that sometimes uh, people do things for you that you would never believe that would happen. This is, um, I worked for this group called um, the Coon Prairie Church in Westby. I did this nomination for them way back in 19, oh, 1980s, way back. One of my earlier projects, what about 19, what was that, 1985. And this group <clears throat> is a small group of uh, people interested in preserving this church. And they have been my inspiration because they were able to save this church, restore it under with a great deal of uh, controversy in the community. And they have treated me like you can't believe they keep having me come back for ceremonies, and this is 20 years later. They keep coming back and keep giving me all this credit for doing this and, and all of that. And you don't get that. You must for, like your work. <laughs> you know, from one little thing I did for them, you know, this is just as, just as one of those very surprise pluses that happens to you. And, you know, you, you don't get many of these kind of things. They even gave me a plaque for appreciation <laughs> just a few years ago. I go, I just did that one little thing for you, but they are so appreciative. And so that sort of stuff keeps you going. Okay. Can you explain, like, what it, like, really is that paper? Like, what does it mean? What does it mean? This is a National Register nomination. And in there, uh, <clears throat> first of all, you have to decide whether this building is eligible for the National Register. And not all buildings are. They have to have, they have to look like they used to look. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, have been maintained in the character that they were. And they have to be, also have to be um, a building that's important to the community. And this church built two churches, one in the country and one in the city. Okay. because the people couldn't decide where they wanted the church to be. <laughs> so now, they, of course, they only need one church. So they have been trying to maintain. This is a church that's built next to the cemetery that they own. And so they have had a real struggle trying to keep this church because it's, um, and it's, it's been maintained just as it was because they weren't using it. This is, if they had been using it, they would have been putting in additions on it and, and restore, you know, remodeling on the inside and all this sort of, but they didn't really need it. So they, it's, main, it's been maintained as it was, and now it's a real gem in the community. And so in order to um, nominate it, you have to first describe it in this. I have to describe all the characters, uh, characteristics of it, the, ch the windows and the wood floors and the bricks and on and on, and how it's sited on the place. And you have to tell them whether anything has been altered. You have to figure out whether anything has been altered from the, when it was originally built. And then, of course, you have all your footnotes and sort of thing. Then you have to talk about what's significant. This building was architecturally significant as an example of a church in the Gothic Revival style. Mm -hmm. So then, you have to talk about the church and how it shows its Gothic style and, and what the characteristics are and how it compares to other uh, Gothic styles and whether it's a good example of that style or not. And then the last part is you talk about the history of the um, congregation, the history of um, the people involved, the historical background. 
So that's essentially what a, a historic um, nomination is. And of course, you have to have all kinds of footnotes. Mm -hmm. You have to tell exactly where you got this information. So that's it. It looks like a small thing, but it takes a lot of time <laughs> to, to manufacture a, a document like that. What's so enjoyable about making these booklets? What's so enjoyable about making those booklets? Well, because it's, it's, mm -hmm. you'll see this is, is not very exciting. You know, all these, mm -hmm. this thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's, you know, going to go through all that, <clears throat> except for someone who really needs to know. So these are fun things for, that you can give to people and they, and they can see, maybe see their house in it or they can see their building in it. Mm -hmm. or, and also, um, you know it, and it's easy to write because you, already, you know the whole history so well. It just, it just go, it just flows out. And then I get to put all my photographs that I take <laughs> in it, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, you know, which is not something that you get to do. And then you get to pass it around the community. And, and they like it. They really enjoyed these things. Have you seen the class change since you started? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. How has it changed? It's gotten much more of a big city now. It's, um, it's not, you don't know everybody who's walking down the street anymore. Um, and the issues be before the city are much more complex. They're not, they're not um, done necessarily by people, what's good for the people. It's, it's, a, it's a whole different place. The traffic, you know, you know it's about the traffic. <laughs> you hear about the traffic all the time. And the change in the stores and the change in the people. It's, it's, it's much more big city now than it was when I first came. Do you think it's changed for the better or the worse? Well, oh, some things are better and some things are worse. You know, I, I miss that small town or that atmosphere of knowing people. Mm -hmm. But um, I think maybe it probably functions a little better now with all the different departments that take care of things. Uh, I don't know. Huh. But it's still as pretty as it always was. <laughs> it's very, it's a very pretty place to live. No. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming. Well, yeah. Thank you for thank having you. me. I just thank really enjoyed it. It's really great learning about all that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. This podcast brought to you from across Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.